Hello there everybody, welcome to this week's edition of The Verdict. It was a very busy week on Racing TV last week and we had lots of races to choose from. It was a difficult task but I think we've got six interesting contests to analyse that will take us from Salisbury to Newmarket and to Dundalk as well. And it's at Salisbury where we get underway, where they staged a meeting on pretty soft ground in the end, soft, good to soft in places at the start of the day but some rain fell through the day and it was quite attritional out there. This is a novice stakes. It was Division 2 of this particular race, and Hannibal Barca was the 11-4 favourite. A little bit weak in the market. Artois was 100-30, Woodton 100-30, and 6-1 Conservative. A little bit of support for that horse. And it was success here for Hannibal Barca, for the Brian Meehan team. Ryan Moore was on board. He jumped out of stall number one, which I think was very important. The runner-up came from nine, and the third, which was Conservative, came from stall three. Let's send them on their way then and have a look at how this race unfolded. And I think at this time of year when tracks have been raced on regularly and watered at times and then we get lots of rain, I think they become difficult to ride tactically and jockeys really have to be on their metal and work out the best place to be and do so quickly. And Ryan Moore did at this meeting and he is dropped in behind Wooderton on the stand side, Wooderton with the sheepskin noseband. He's just dropped in there. Now, there's a difference of opinion as far as the jockeys were concerned. Traditionally, sometimes they like to be stand side on soft ground at Salisbury, and Artois looked to take five of them across that way, and that included Thunder Roar, who's in behind in the sheepskin noseband on that side. But Ryan Moore was keen to ride the rail, and we will see later on in another ride of his that that is exactly where he wanted to be and I think through the whole of the meeting that stands rail was golden I think that really was the place to be Woodton uh, wound this up quite a long way out between the four and the three the course track sectionals tell us that he, he really picked up and wound the pace up against that rail and perhaps he did a little bit too much too soon he was then challenged by the third horse conservative to his outside and then Ryan, to get a run, switches off the rail, and once he gets to the front, he'll angle back towards the rail. Meanwhile, towards the stand side, Thunder Roar is just coming to take it up from Artois. And he runs a really good race, because effectively he's on the wrong side of the track. The final time, given the conditions, was OK. 1 minute 30.16. I think it was quite an honestly run race where they wound it up a long way out. But look at the winner now. Hannibal Barca back on that lovely rail. He's finished off very strongly under Ryan. Thunder Roar has done a good job towards the stand side and Conservatives kept on uh, pretty well. But jockeyship was at a premium there. Ryan got it right. He was in the right place. I think jockeys after this began to realise through the meeting that you wanted to be on that far side. So how do we sum that up then? Let's have a look at what we saw out there. This division was 0.54 seconds faster than Division 1, which was won by a useful type called One Ease. And that was a pretty good effort from Hannibal Barca to be just over half a second quicker than One Ease in the first division. So this is, this is a truly run race, an honestly run race. The form can be uh, believed. What about the winner then, Hannibal Barca? Well, he's got loads of stamina in his pedigree. Um, he's a little bit free going. Ryan got him settled on the rail in behind Wooderton and he dropped his head eventually. He's a bit free going, but he was quite strong at the line and I think he'll get a bit further. He'll definitely stay at least another furlong. Well, at Salisbury uh, on Thursday, being on that far side and on that rail was really important and Ryan found the best part of the track. Um, but nonetheless, I think Hannibal Barca was easily the best horse in the race and some credit to, to the runner-up uh, Thunder Roar towards the stand side. 
Zofni is the sire of the winner. His progeny, as we know, like cutting the ground. I think it was soft at Salisbury. It really suited Hannibal Barca. And given that we're probably going to have soft ground from now until the end of the flat season, there might be another race uh, in this fella. And I wonder, I wonder, you never know, it could be the Verton Futurity. He has entered in that particular race. That comes up at Doncaster in October, on the 23rd, in fact. Brian Meehan might just chuck him in there. He'll have to improve a ton if he's going to win that particular race. But he's certainly a nice two-year-old to keep an eye on. Back to Salisbury we go. This was on the Thursday afternoon. The condition stakes. It was over six furlongs and Ribby was the even money favourite and pretty strong in the market. Tolstoy 4-1, to one, Witch Hunter 4-1 to one, and 9-2 to two and bigger the rest. And it's Ribby who wins. He scrambles home here somewhat in the conditions. He came from stall two. Atherby jumped out of stall number six and he occupied the runner-up spot. And Witch Hunter was a very unlucky third from stall four. This got very messy in the closing stages. So send them on their way. And uh, by and large, they wanted that uh, far rail. Uh, Ribby just angling across. He's the grey horse in the, the Shadwell colours. Uh, you remember that he bolted on the way to post on his last intended run at Newmarket and couldn't take part. He was much more relaxed in the preliminaries here and he was reasonably well relaxed in the race. The controlling pace was Atherby. He got across to that to good rail and he's excelled himself by nearly winning this condition stakes. Amber Dew was out wide and stayed wide and that didn't do that horse any favours whatsoever. The pace is the important thing about this race. It was quite steady. The finishing speed percentage, 105.44. So they came home 5.44% quicker than they ran the rest of the race. So they just went pretty steady to halfway. Atherby's got the plum position against the rail. Ribby looks in trouble now. He's being pushed and shoved along by Crowley, the grey horse. And he's not really going anywhere at this stage. In behind, green and white colours, Witch Hunter and Ryan Moore. Now Ryan rode the rail to success on Hannibal Barca. He wanted to be there. He did the right thing but he didn't get the right outcome. He sat and waited. He was waiting for room and no gap came because Atherby kept rolling against that rail. Ribby didn't drop away. He kept finding under pressure and gets back up. And just in the end, when Witch Hunter gets a bit of a gap, he's flying at the death. I think he'd have won the race if he'd got through earlier on. He's only just beaten, what, three quarters of a length max in the end under Ryan, who wanted to do the right thing. He'll be criticised for not switching out wide, but he knew where the best ground was, and he wanted to stay on that rail, and he was just waiting and hoping for a gap. He did the right thing, but didn't quite get the right outcome. Witch Hunter is definitely a horse who we're going to be following. So what did we see? Well, we saw Ribby getting the job done, but he scrambled home somewhat. I think the ground was too soft for him, and I think the trip was a little bit too sharp as well given that they went a steady pace. What about his final three furlongs? Well, the course track sectionals tell us all we need to know. Uh, final three of 36.72. Now look at Witch Hunter, 36.34. Despite getting all that trouble, he's come home really strongly without ever being able to open up properly. I think that means that Witch Hunter would probably have won with a clearer run. But Ryan wanted the golden rail. He did the right thing, as I've said. It just didn't pan out for him. But uh, Witch Hunter was pretty unlucky, I think. Now, fastest furlong of the race. These are the course track sectionals, of course. And he fired the fastest furlong of 12.96. That was the final furlong of the race. It's pretty slow. That's because of the conditions. But he was still faster than all of the rest and not able to open up properly. What do we think about Ribby? We're going to make him better than the bear result, I think. There's no doubt about that. Conditions and trip didn't necessarily suit him. And we're going to put in our racing TV trackers, definitely Witch Hunter, really unlucky in that condition stakes, which will probably work out well, albeit that that was a bit of a messy race. Time to turn our attentions to Newmarket on Saturday and a very good Phillies handicap. It uh, looked deep on paper this race and it really delivered. State occasion, the well back favourite at 9 to 2, Achilles 11 to 2, and 6 to 1, Evident Beauty. Sevens and bigger the rest, and the rest included number four, Via Sistina, who was a 12 to 1 shot, and she wins this in really good style. She came from stall number 14, and she got the better of Swoon in second place from four. State occasion was third from 12, 
and the fourth horse home was uh, Aquila Louise. Now, the main thing to note about this race as we send them on their way is that it was very strongly run. Now, I know being prominent on the Roly Mile is normally the place to be, but not when they go this hard. Jamie Spencer was very keen to drop out and sit chilly out the back on Via Sistina. He's got a clock in his head. He knew they were going quickly. And there he is, right out the back, sitting last at that point of the race. The finishing speed percentage ultimately was 101.92. That's for the winner. And it tells you that Jamie Spencer's got this absolutely spot on. But if you go to the Racing TV website, go to the results, look at the sectionals, you'll see that some of the finishing speed percentages for the, the other horses were 95, 96. They've just gone too hard and then they've wound it up quite a long way out. And it has really set up nicely for Via Sistina, who comes there absolutely cantering under Jamie Spencer. This is just quite simply a brilliant ride from him. Look at the final three furlongs, 37.54. I think in the conditions, that's pretty good. If we're looking at 12 second furlongs, you'd be looking at 36 for the last three. Well, she's come home a little over that, but, but given the conditions, she's finished off very strongly and certainly a lot stronger than anything else in the race. There were horses that were up uh, with the pace early that plugged on quite well. State occasion being one, Achilles in the green colors, the yellow cap being another, but yet they're all rowing now. they are four to go. Plenty of these are off the bridle. Spencer has not moved a muscle. He's still not anxious to get there yet on this lightly raced uh, Via Sistina. Now he makes his move and she just scythes through them. Now there's an element to this which suggests they've gone too hard, they've picked up a long way out and they're all getting tired in front of him and they're stopping. There's no doubt that that's what happened. That's what the numbers tell us. But this horse quickens up in fine style and goes away to win very easily. Swoon's run a good race, always prominent and kept on and did best of those that was ridden quite close to the pace. But now Spencer says go, and it's all over in a matter of strides. Soon clinging on for second. Achilles has run really well. It's a very consistent filly, state occasion, just holding on for third. Talbea was uh, a little bit further behind them, running on a bit, but that's a quite a quirky horse there. But this was just brilliant from Jamie Spencer. I just wanted to highlight what he did here. He's having a fantastic end to the season. And we mentioned earlier on when we talked about Salisbury that when conditions are like this, jockey ships at a premium. We've seen Ryan Moore riding really well at Salisbury. Here, Jamie Spencer, the, the big boys, the big guns, suss the conditions out and suss pace out in the conditions very quickly. It was a very strongly run race. Finishing speed percentage told us that. It's 101.92 for the winner. Others finished off a lot slower than that. Well, that tells us that Jamie Spencer got it right, but he got a perfect setup. They went hard, they kicked after halfway, he could bide his time and pick them up whenever he wanted. It was brilliant from Spencer. What about Via Sistina's final three? Well, we've highlighted it was 37.54. No other horse in the race dipped under 38 seconds. So that puts that final three furlongs that she fired into context, and you'll find those figures on the Racing TV website. This was a good class two handicap, make no doubt about it. It's a premier handicap. It's a very strong handicap for fillies. And we can believe and follow this form with utter confidence. I think it was a really good performance from Via Sistina. She's lightly raced. There's gonna be a fair bit more to come from her. She's just had four runs and she's won two of them now. And she probably wants dig in the ground. Both of her wins have come with cut and that's probably the key to her. She got a perfect setup, and sometimes you want to, people want to say, well, I'm gonna avoid her next time because she won't necessarily get the same setup again. Well, I think she's lightly raced and improving. There's more to come from Via Sistina. Feature event at Newmarket on Saturday was the Kingdom of Bahrain Sun Chariot Stakes. Phillies and mares in this group one. Mother Earth, the winner of the Thousand Guineas, sent off favourites at 11 to four. Snow Lantern, nine to two. Saffron Beach, five to one. And it was 12s and bigger the rest. Like, a very strong renewal of this Group 1 contest, and the winner was Saffron Beach, turning round 1,000 guineas form with Mother Earth. Saffron Beach came from stall three, Mother Earth jumped out of ten, so the other side of the track, which I think played its part. Dream Loper came from nine and ran an absolute blinder in third. The opponent plays was fourth from stall number 12. Send them on their way then. Opponent plays in the yellow colours, makes the running towards the stand side, and the winner, Saffron Beach, goes far side, and makes all under William Buick. So he certainly had a, a difference of opinion in this race as far as the jockeys were concerned. 
and it was William Buick who got it absolutely spot on. I thought this was one of the rides of the week from the front. This is a typical rolly mile ride. You want to be prominent over this sort of trip at this track. And William Buick basically made every yard of the running and got it absolutely spot on from the front. But I do think the second and third would have been closer if they'd raced in the other group. But they were marooned a little bit towards the stand side and always chasing Saffron Beach who at this point is hurried by no speak Alexander and Shane Foley uh, but never headed at all at any point so there's the divide your winner far side the white reins the runner up is towards the stand side Mother Earth and what three four lengths behind Dream Loper even further behind but finishes off the race very strongly indeed so if we keep them rolling along uh, here you'll see that Saffron Beach is able to quicken quite well from the front and get first jump to a degree on those horses that were racing stand side. 99.9% .9 the finishing speed percentage. So William Buick's got it just about spot on. If you're looking at 100% of being what you want over a mile here at Newmarket, then he's, he's bang on. He's got the pace right and he's got a horse who can quicken well. She certainly sealed the deal through the fifth and sixth furlong. Course track sections have got 11.66 and 11.87. So she did quicken up in good style. Mother Earth is really boxing on now. She's coming home very strongly. She can go past Epona Plays and then hang on to second from Dream Loper, who was sucked into the race somewhat on the stands side. But it was Saffron Beach who was the winner. And when she quickened up in the penultimate furlong, she just gained an important couple of lengths on her rivals who were stranded, marooned, if you like, towards the stand side. She quickened well then, 5th and 6th furlong, 11.6 and 11.87. That's pretty good in the conditions. The prevailing conditions were definitely soft. What does that mean about her final three furlongs? Well, she was 37.41, and that's not too bad. A good final time of 140.19. Now, I compared that to the guineas, where the ground was described as good, and that was much quicker, 136.37. The Guineas won by uh, Mother Earth. Saffron Beach has turned the form around, but in a much slower time, and that's courtesy of the conditions. What a result that was for Jane Chapelheim and her team. She's done remarkably well with Saffron Beach. She's a very capable trainer. She does well with the horses that she uh, gets, and she's got the best out of this filly, who's won really, really nicely under William Buick. She's quickened up well. I think a little bit of cutting the ground perhaps has brought about some improvement from uh, Saffron Beach. There were some disappointments in the race. Snow Lantern being the biggest of those, beaten a long way out. But I don't think there's any fluke about the success. What about Mother Earth? What do we make of her? She's the Guineas winner. She's very tough. She's very consistent. She was unlucky behind No Speak Alexander last time up. She was strong at the finish. If you compare her to the rest of the field and look at the course track sectionals, she fired the fastest final furlong. Now it's a slow one, 13.36. It's very much a soft ground time when they've gone quite hard. But nonetheless, she was the fastest in the final furlong. That's a fact. Dream Loper had no chance to win. She was in the wrong group and she was too far back, but she did fire the fastest final three furlongs of the race, 37.41. But she got going too late. She was too far back at a positional disadvantage and she was saving petrol early on and that enabled her uh, to come home quickly, 37.41. But when all is said and done about the kingdom of Bahrain, Sun Chariot Stakes, we just have to give the plaudits to Jane Chapelheim. Let's have a look at an interesting maiden that took place at Newmarket on Saturday. Seven furlongs was the trip and the favourite, although weak in the market, was Philistine. Seven to four, having been five to four. Tac, 100 to 30. Alma Beer, look at this, nine to two, having been 12 to one early doors. First officer, a big drifter, 17 to two, out to 11 to one. So it was a little bit of a, a gamble landed here, you'd have to say, because Alma Beer does the job for William Buick and William Haggis. And this was a, a win under what I would say was a, a considerate ride. He really looked after this filly in the closing stages. And um, I think it's a horse to follow uh, going forward. It's that mid-division in a race that was just evenly run. They didn't go mad up front. And I think that uh, gives this horse a little bit more credit, to be honest. It's that mid-division, blue colours, the, the yellow spots. Philistine was the, the runner-up who's out a little bit wider and didn't get much cover. I don't think it made a lot of difference the way the race went. And I think this winner 
is very, very useful. Finishing speed percentage, 105.91. Tells us they didn't go that hard. And possibly the winner's a bit too far back, given how the race was run, and did well to win. But I just got the impression in the closing stages that William Buick was always confident. You can see there, hard on the bridle, passing the four pole, angled out a little bit, and has got a clear shot at those in front, which include uh, Tack, who finished back in fourth place, first officer in Philistine, in front of the winner as well. Going into the dip, this winner really got rolling, according to the course track sectionals. Consecutive furlongs, 11.89 and 11.65, to run down horses that had got first run to a degree in a race that wasn't very strongly run. So they're not stopping that much in front, but the winner is picking up. Now watch Buick here. He doesn't really resort to the whip. It's all hands and heels. It's vigorous. There's a slap down the neck, but I don't think there's anything behind the saddle from Buick. Hands and heels throughout the final furlong, and this horse has responded all the way to the line. And that is in line with the horse's lovely pedigree by Frankel, out of a horse called Mufri Ha, who was trained by William Haggis as well, and was very useful. So a very nice pedigree. So, what do we make of this overall, then? Well, I think this is a really nice horse, and William Haggis will make hay with this horse. Came home strongly, very strongly, in a race that was just run at an even gallop. They didn't go mad at all. Those that were prominent boxed on for second, third, and fourth, but were run down in cold blood by a really nice horse. The winner really picked up going into the dip. There were two consecutive furlongs that caught the eye when you look at the course track sectionals. They were 11.89 and 11.65, and that enabled this horse to get to those leaders and then clear away under William Buick, who I thought was really, really good. He was very good on Saffron Beach, making all the running in the Sun Chariot. But here, look at him. Look how considerate he is. It's just hands and heels. He's teaching this horse without getting too vigorous, and I think that will pay dividends going forward. I touched on the pedigree, it's another winner for uh, Frankel, but out of Mufri Ha, who was highly rated, and William Haggis also trained uh, that horse, so knows the family very well indeed. And you've got to say, looking at that, just visually, that the winner will stay a little bit further than seven. Pedigree certainly suggests that as well. And uh, this horse, remember the name, is a bright prospect, Al Mubir. I think will make a, a very nice three-year-old. I was keen to bring you this uh, listed race from Dundalk, it took place on Friday. It was over seven furlongs, some nice two-year-olds in here. Absolute Ruler was 15 to eight and well backed. Marcus Panam was 100 to 30. King XJ was six to one. Corviglia was 13 to two. And it was seven to one and bigger the rest. And it was a drifter who won. It's number seven, uh, Snaffles, who I think is quite a useful performer who jumped out of stall seven. King XJ jumped from stall five. And Marcus Panam was from stall a number one. We'll pick up the first three for you. The principal horse is the horse with the big white face and the dark red colours. Number seven, just about to track the pace, which was modest. There wasn't much of a, a gallop on here, but I'm not letting that put me off the result because the first three home were all last time out winners. Indeed, the winner had been particularly impressive last time up, showing a bright turn of foot. And I don't think we saw the best of Snaffles here because of the pace. There were plenty of horses in with a chance between the two and the one. And you could have thrown a blanket over quite a few of them at the finish. But nonetheless, Snaffles got the job done and is a very bright prospect going forward, I think. Now, in behind, Star Girls and Mai is about to get hampered. Green and red colours just on the rail. There, just gets checked, loses at length, length and a half, loses momentum as well. This is a horse who had won a barrier trial here at Dundalk. It's trained by Henry de Bromhead. Pitches this horse straight into a listed race. They must think of her quite highly. And she's run a big race given that she got hampered there. And watch her in the home straight. She has to switch for a run and gets hampered again. So she's definitely a horse to keep an eye on going forward. As definitely is the winner. I think there is no doubt this horse can go on to much better things. Just a bit of an awkward head carriage at this stage. Plenty of them in with a chance. But Snaffles quickens up in good style and fires a decent final time, 125.32. It wasn't too bad. They quickened up from three out and made up for that steady gallop early on. But there you go. Look, you could throw a blanket over them, really. They'd gone stronger. I think they'd have been more spread out and this winner would have been even more impressive. But nonetheless, got the job done in reasonable fashion. 
but I think there's a lot more to come from this horse. And there is a big sales race coming up at Nace on the horizon, and that might be uh, where Joseph O'Brien decides to send snaffles. So this is a strong listed contest overall. I think with the first three home being previous winners and some nice prospects in behind, I think this is form that we can really take seriously. I think this is a very strong listed race for Dundalk to stage. Decent turn of foot from the winner in a steadily run affair, picked up in, in good style and uh, had the race in the bag with half a furlong to go. I think it would have been more impressive if they'd gone a good gallop. I think there's going to be loads of winners that, that come out of this race. I think we, we highlighted the one there in Star Girls Amar. But I think the first, second and third can, can win again and particularly uh, the winner. I'm very taken with Snaffles. Not strongly run at all. Um, it was a bit messy. Uh, but I think the winner nonetheless was very impressive. It didn't produce a decent time form speed figure, as you might imagine, because of that uh, messy early gallop. Now, this valuable race at Nace, where this horse is entered, looks an ideal opportunity. It's on October the 17th. That's where uh, Snaffles will be going. Now, whether Snaffles will be just as effective on, on autumn soft ground remains to be seen, but that could well be the target. And if so, would have a pretty good chance. If you look at the average time form rating for that race, winning rating, the winner averages coming out at 106. Well, Snaffles is all rated 106 with projected improvement to come. That's what the P is. So um, that looks a pretty good fit for this already useful Snaffles. So that was the verdict uh, this week. I hope you enjoyed looking back at uh, the action that we brought you. A couple of interesting races uh, from Salisbury, uh, Newmarket as well, where Saffron Beach was the star. And then Snaffles, a very interesting two-year-old uh, going forward. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. The Racing TV website has all the exclusive racing content you love from our channel and so much more. RacingTV.com is a true one-stop shop for all racing fans, featuring the latest race cards, videos and breaking news, all on one easy-to-use site. You'll never miss a race on RacingTV.com. Watch the main channel or create your own viewing experience by watching up to four of our dedicated live race course feeds at once on Racing TV Extra. If you can't watch the action live, our race replays will be online within minutes of the finish. We know how important race cards are. That's why we've teamed up with Timeform to offer in-depth and easy-to-digest cards with Timeform ratings and odds comparison powered by Odds Checker. Our fast results service from courses around the world will keep you up to date with all the latest racing results. If you rate a horse you've seen, you can add it to the industry-leading racing TV tracker. Then you'll be notified the next time it's entered for a race and due to run, so you'll never need to miss the price again. And there's more. RacingTV.com provides a daily tipping service from our betting experts, which are certainly worth looking out for. You can even apply for your next club day via RacingTV.com. Simply head to the club day page, select the club day you'd like to attend, and you'll be on course before you know it. With these features and so much more, the Racing TV website is your ultimate online hub for horse racing. Start making the most of your membership now at RacingTV.com on your desktop, mobile or tablet.